Why is it yellow? I don't know. Nobody knows. And that's okay. The, the normal answer would be that it's aposematism, or a mimicry of aposematism, which is when an animal uses bright colored markings to signal them being toxic. From what we currently know, Sao Tome Cecilians aren't poisonous or venomous. But that's the normal theory. The funny theory is they evolved that color over time to match with where they're native to, that being banana plantations. Sao Tome Cecilians are, like the name suggests, from the island of Sao Tome and Principe, uh, a, a little place in Central Africa's right hip. Actually, for being such a tiny island, Sao Tome Cecilians are kind of big, right? Fully grown ones at least. Well, well fully grown, well, it, it kind of depends. Okay, so there's this thing called Bergman's Rule. It basically states that lower temperatures result in bigger vertebrate species. Usually this rule isn't really applicable at all, especially not in reptiles and amphibians. However, the Sao Tome Cecilian is a species this does apply to. Various studies have shown that the higher in altitude, the larger the Sao Tome Cecilians you'll find, which means a lot considering how much Sao Tome varies in altitude. The difference isn't small either, it can be up to 30% of a size increase in the highest areas. Hello, welcome to Herp Corner. I'm your host for today, Six Shivers, or Six Shiv for short. And today we'll be talking about the Sao Tome Cecilian. But it goes by many names other than just that. Its scientific name is Schistometapum thomense, which, well, from what I know, is complete gibberish. No, no, seriously, Sao Tome is a Portuguese speaking island because of its history of colonization. But this name isn't in Portuguese, it's barely even Latin. From all the stuff I've read, Schistometapum is nonsense. As for the specific epithet Thomense, maybe it kind of sounds like Tome? Like Sao Tome? Tomense? Tomense? Sounds kind of like Tome? Kind of? But it's okay if it doesn't make sense, because the, that's the most frustrating name they go by. The names that actually mean something are what the local Sao Tomeans call them. They're referred to in Portuguese as Cobra Bobo, which translates to Silly Snake, <laughs> as well as Agua y Se Cecilian, which means Island Cecilian. Of course, they're not actually a snake. They're a Cecilian. And what is a Cecilian? Well, you know how there's frogs and salamanders? Well, Cecilian is another type of amphibian like that. Like other amphibians, they're partially aquatic and breathe through their skin. Like the ringneck snake, Sao Tome Cecilians are actually communal. If you turn over a rock and find one of these guys, chances are quite a few more nearby. And just like Baphomet said in that video, it's kind of up in the air if this is because they have complex relationships with one another, or if it's just because the conditions in that one area are preferable. Personally, I'm more partial to the latter in this case. but. Again, there isn't anything to suggest for or against this conclusion, so really, I don't know. But one thing we do know based off of this is that Sao Tome Cecilians are doing just fine population-wise. Locals report seeing them a ton, and the IUCN red list calls them least concern. The only thing I'm worried about for these guys is called Batra Chochytrium dendrobotidus, also known as the amphibian chytrid fungus. Only a little bit of this specific species has been found on Sao Tome, but allegedly it has potential to spread really fast through amphibians. But this is another thing we don't really have any info on, as this was something only noted quite recently. Thankfully, there's no documented cases of it hitting Sao Tome Cecilians, but there is potential for it getting to them in the future. Outside of that, there aren't any big threats facing these guys. After all, they're really quite versatile. Not only are they are they common in really mountainous areas, like seriously, some of them have even been found 1,300 meters off the ground, but they're also common in all sorts of other various biomes Sao Tome has to offer. Sao Tome as an island was formed thanks to volcanic eruption, so a lot of it is super rocky and dusty. 
but even more of the island is crazy humid rainforests. Sao Tome Sicilians thrive in all of it, including towns of Sao Tomeans, which Sao Tome Sicilians are more than happy to seek refuge in. Funnily enough, they're actually really calm and actually handleable. I wouldn't recommend handling them though, just because a lot of other Sicilian species are super venomous and can have really sharp teeth, and not enough stuff has been published on the Sao Tome Sicilian to say if they also can be venomous or not. So be wary. But there are people who've handled them in the past all fine, and the, the little guys are pretty calm about it. So that, mixed with them coexisting with the residents of the island, they're just all around a really s sweet species. Here's something I find pretty cool about these guys. So usually it's male reptiles or amphibians that initiate mating, typically to the chagrin of the female. But with Sao Tome Sicilians, the female starts it. She lures in the male by secreting pheromones through her skin, which the male smells with his Jacobson's organ. When they're beginning copulation, the male rubs his nose along her body, which is actually where the Jacobson's organ is, so he's probably either also secreting pheromones or trying to sniff hers. Remember, this is the main way Sicilians communicate with each other, so they do a lot of that. But when the male is done rubbing his nose, he bites her neck ring and inserts his hemipenes into her, uh, in into her what are called urogenital pockets. Uh, pe people never talk about the fact that female animals with cloacas have two vaginas. Both vaginas, or rather, urogenital pockets, since they don't exactly look like vaginas at all, have different uses. Let me tell you. So, the first one leads to the oviducts, or what are functionally the ovaries. The second one leads to the wolfian ducts, which are connected to their bladder. Funny thing, Wolfian ducks are actually exclusive to male animals, but not with the Sao Tome Sicilians, I guess. Does that mean they're hermaphroditic? Well, no, I wouldn't go that far, since as far as we know, the males and amphibians have separate gametes that they don't share or develop or anything like that. But after their mating process is all done, the female soon after lays her eggs underground in a communal space. Seems like they have their own... I guess, communal egg nursery, kind of. Uh, that's cute. By spring, the hatchlings emerge all together and fend for themselves. And with that, I'll conclude our little journey here. Sao Tome Sicilians are really awesome, so thanks for sticking around and hearing a little bit about them. There's still a lot for us to learn about these little guys, so if any of you out there live in the island of Sao Tome, definitely photograph any guys you find and post them on iNaturalist. Let me know if you've ever found these guys in person. Those are always a joy to read. Okay, that'll be all for me. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.